what are the uh, interesting trajectories you see for the proliferation of virtual reality or mixed reality in the yeah, next? Yeah, so I was um, I was a Magic Leap for what five years um, with the best title of all time. Oh, thanks, F Chief Chief Futurist. Yeah, yeah, and so I sort of had a, a little squad of people in, in Seattle doing what you might call content R&D. So we're trying to make content for AR, but um, because it's such a new medium, uh, we, there's it's, it's more of an engineering R&D project almost than a, than a creative project. So it was fascinating to see um, everything that goes into m making uh, an AR system that runs. Um, so AR, um, an AR device, if it's really going to do AR, needs to be running SLAM in real time. And that alone is a big... As, so for people who don't know, first of all, virtual reality is creating a almost fully artificial world and putting you inside it. Augmented reality, AR, is taking the, the real world and putting top on top putting stuff on top of that real world. And when you say slam, that means in real time, the device needs to be able to sense, accurately detect everything about that world sufficiently to be able to reconstruct it, the, the 3D uh, structure of it so you can put stuff on top of it. And doing that in real time, presumably not just real time, but in a way that creates a pleasant experience for the human perception system is uh yeah that's a that's an engineering project right yeah well said and it's just one of the things that the system has to do it's also tracking your eyes so it knows what you're looking at uh how far away what you're looking at is um it, it's uh, um it's performing all those functions um and it's got to uh keep doing that without you know burning up the the CPU or 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 uh, depleting the battery uh, unreasonably fast, and that's that's just table stakes. It's just the basic functions of the the operating system, and then any content that you want to add has to sit on top of that. It's got to be rendered by the optics um, at a sufficiently low latency that um, it looks real and you don't get sick. So it's an amazing thing, and um, you know, magically shipped. Uh, device that can do that in 2019. Um, and they're about to ship the ML2. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know any more about that than anyone else because I don't work there anymore. <laughs> um, but th does it still, in, to some degree, boil down to a killer app, a, a content question? Like you said, it's kind of a wide open space. Nobody knows exactly what's going to be the compelling thing. Yeah. So doesn't a super compelling experience of some sort alleviate some of the need for engineering perfection? Well, there's a, a base layer of engineering that you have to have no matter what. Um, but you're certainly right that people, like in the early days of video games, put up with kind of low frame rate and, and what we would now call crappy graphics because they were having so much fun playing Doom or, or whatever. Right. Even Tetris. Yeah, yeah. So um, so for sure that's true. And so, um, you know, uh, I was uh, working on consumer-facing content. Um, a, there was a great team in Wellington, New Zealand, that, that made a game uh, called uh, Dr. Groidbrot's uh, Invaders that um, that uh, realized the the potential of uh, of AR gaming in a way that I don't think anything else has uh, before or since. Um, and um, so that was definitely the strategy um, <clears throat> until uh, what April twenty twenty, which is when the company decided to uh, pivot to commercial industrial applications instead. Um, so, um, and you know, I, I I haven't seen their 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 financial projections, but I assume they had good reasons for for making that strategic decision. 
Um, it just means that it's no longer uh, necessarily targeted at at just end users who want to play a game or or be entertained, but it's you know that to me from a sort of a, a dreamer f futurist perspective is heartbreaking because I I, yeah. I I don't know necessarily from in the VR space, but I see this kind of thing with uh, with robotics, where to me the future of robotics is consumer facing. Uh, and a lot of great roboticists, Boston Dynamics and uh, companies like that are focused on sort of industrial applications. Yeah. Because yeah, for financial business reasons. Yeah. No, I, I can see the parallels for sure. You know, we'll see. It was a fun uh, project. You know, we uh, uh, we worked on a, an app, for example, called Baby Goats, which just populated your room with with baby goats. That seems like a killer app right there. Well, so we we thought highly of the of the idea for sure. Yes. Um so <laughs> but because of the slam uh the the um the system knew for example, here's a table, here's a little end table. We know the heights uh we know how high a, our animated baby goat can jump. Um and so um so our engineers had to to build a system for converting the slam primitives into um, game engine objects um, that that the uh, the game uh, the AIs in the game could navigate mm -hmm. around. Um, so um, and that ended up shipping as more of a dev kit or a sort of how to a sample app mm -hmm. than as a a finished consumer facing. You mean the baby goat AI? Yeah, yeah. I that seems to me like a world I could ent entertain myself for hours just every day coming home to to to, to see of baby goats. Yeah, I mean it was an ambient kind of. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not a thing that you would sit there and play like a a, a video. Just game. life. Yeah, yeah. But now <laughs> there's baby goats. You, know? I mean, what's the purpose of having dogs and cats? Right. In your life, exactly. Right. It's kind of ambient. Yeah, they're not really helping you do anything, but it's enriching your life. And you can go and play fetch or something for yeah. a while if you want, but you don't have to. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so we worked on that and a bigger project that was more of a f storytelling in a fictional uh, universe. Um, the hardware is worth a look. There's still a belief. I just saw it this morning looking at Twitter that the Magic Leap never shipped anything. Uh, but they've been since 2019. You can go to their website and buy one of these devices anytime you want to spend the money. Yeah, uh, and the new one is coming out, I think, in 2022. So in 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 a, in a few months.